attention, everybody. The evolution's taking place. Watch the transitional flow that's happening. 2017, right? ECB, Bank of Japan, blockchain technologies too immature to replace settlement systems. Who was involved in this? Euro systems, RTGS, Target 2, Hyperledger, right? Hyperledger fabric in particular. Moving on, let's go to 2021, right? Scrolling up to the top of this, 2021 Hyperledger. What did they conclude in this PDF? We scroll down here to page 38. Lack of technology maturity. Again, challenges of business and blockchain, right? But now what are we seeing? 2023. Again, Target 2, a display from Bank de France, Eurosystem, securities, market distributed ledger technology platforms, Corda with Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Fabric, protocol layer, right? What are we also seeing at the same exact time? Hedera announcing, again, partnerships, right? We really see the opportunity is in the broader adoption of digital securities as the next evolution of the market infrastructure at the same time. Remember, April 25th, 2023, Watcher Guru put out Russia's finance minister spoke about a new payment system that will enable the use of crypto for international payments. <laughs> Okay. Right now, cryptocurrencies are utilized for what? Speculative trading. In the future, they will be utilized for what? Our new payment infrastructure. But since we think the future value of crypto is for payments and not for speculative trading. Pow. Oh! Do you all see? Do you see the timeline? Many blessings. Pay attention to detail. Alrighty, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Cyprex video breakdown. I have a massive deep dive for you all here today. We're going to be discussing major developments in the cryptocurrency industry, talking about CBDCs, Hyperledger Foundation, um, just going down the rabbit hole, giving you guys an open-minded, long-term perspective on what's really going on in this market space and why we are not seeing massive amounts of money, trillions of dollars really flood into this space just yet. Um, as always, trying to give you guys the realist perspective to really understand, right? Well, I'm going to show you guys from a long-term perspective how this is all going to play out, in my personal opinion, based off of some fundamentals that have just recently developed, showing you guys behind the scenes kind of the evolution that's really taking place over time, okay? Step by step, uh, why we're not seeing these massive bull runs just yet. And I'm talking about trillions of dollars that everybody's projecting to flood into the space not happening yet, all right? So that's what we're going to go over in today's video breakdown. We're going to start here. This is a post that I put out to you guys on the Twitter space, April 17th, 2023. Rob Platnick at the Hyperledger Global Forum 2022 last year, I believe in September, if I'm not mistaken. It was towards the end of the year last year. <clears throat> okay. And he specifically says in this video breakdown that uh, state of the industry, uh, there's probably, and uh, Daniela listed a, a set of industries uh, and in our involvement with Hyperledger and in my role as uh, a chair for the previous three years of the board, uh, I don't know that there's any industry I've encountered, whether it's certainly financial services, healthcare, music, energy, um, uh, airline parts. There's literally no business that I've encountered that hasn't had some discussion or there's not innovation from fintechs and uh, the core business leaders in that, that particular industry using blockchain and distributed ledger technology. And Hyperledger is always among the top uh, contenders in that conversation. Yeah, like it doesn't matter what topic it is, Hyperledger is at the forefront of those conversations. Okay, just to give you a broad overview of what this is. Um, now, moving on, I wanna take your attention to an article from September 12th, 2022. So roughly in the same time frame that this video came out okay and we see hyperledger announces eight new members including casper labs bank de france that's going to play an important role today and central bank of nigeria to kick off hyperledger global forum that's this global forum okay that rob palatnik was sitting at now let's go back a couple of years this is from september 7 2017 and the reason why pay attention let's pay attention to vocabulary here that i'm going to show you all these documents is to again give you all a long-term perspective of the slow 
developmental progress that this ecosystem, this, this crypto future generative payment ecosystem is actually happening behind the scenes, how it's all really truly taking place and why, again, trillions of dollars, aside from regulatory uncertainty in this space, are not flowing in to this market just yet. So September 7th, 2017, notice how it's always in September when these, it's interesting. Anyways, ECB Bank of Japan say blockchain technology is immature, okay, to replace settlement systems, right? That's very interesting surrounding an into, uh, a fundamental that just came out, okay? We'll get into that in just one second. But this article reads, again, from 2017, watch the progression. The European Central Bank and the Bank of Japan have concluded that distributed ledger technology, or DLT, is currently not mature enough to be used for large-scale applications such as real-time growth settlement RTGS systems. Now, I've shown you all, even in the past, individuals like Nelly Lang saying that <clears throat> cryptocurrency assets are utilized for speculative trading and not for payments, and that in the future, they will be utilized for payments, right? It goes on to say the decisions following a research of distributed ledger technology was launched by the regulators last year to explore its viability in the financial market system. Now, what distributed ledger technologies were they um, testing? Okay, that's what's important, especially surrounding some recently updated fundamentals and videos that have just come out. Okay, it says the project included the replication of the liquid saving mechanisms of the euro systems. This is important. The Euro Systems RTGS Target 2 and the Bank of Japan's RTGS BOG Net and publicly available distributed ledger technology application. Here's where it mentions Hyperledger Fabric version 06.1. So it talks about the Hyperledger Fabric, right? Okay, let's move on. Here is that fundamental PDF from that test, European Central Bank, the Euro System. Pay attention, Euro System, that plays an important role today. Um, payment systems, liquidity, saving mechanisms in a distributed ledger environment, September 2017. And remember, they had come to the conclusion that at this time, 2017, that distributed ledger technologies were too immature, or immature okay? they weren't mature enough to facilitate payment services, right? <clears throat> okay, global payment services. Coming down here, this is where you can see, okay, Hyperledger Foundation, okay, Hyperledger Fabric, right? being tested and implemented the background information on the Hyperledger Fabric, okay? Now, moving on. This is a very interesting PDF. Remember, this is all these fundamentals, this PDF right here and this fundamental, okay, 2017. Now, let's transition and move a little bit forward, okay? We got page 38 right here, but let's scroll up to the top of this PDF. This is now 2021, okay? The 2021 Hyperledger brand study by the Linux Foundation. We'll get into the Linux Foundation in just one second because this plays an important and crucial role on how big this all is. Like you really truly have to grasp how massive this truly really is, okay? So again, 2021, the articles that we just read were from 2027. So let's further the development. Why have we not seen trillions of dollars come to this market yet? Well, we come down here and it says, challenges of business blockchain. Here it says, 58% of these industry-leading companies that were surveyed in this PDF, which was over 500, Fortune 500 companies, it says 58% lack of technology maturity, okay? So they believe that it's due to the lack of technology maturity. Again, this is now in 2021 in correlation with them coming to the conclusion back in 2017 as well, right? That distributed ledger technologies, blockchain technology is immature, right? So in 2017, immature. 2021, immature, right? Well, now let's keep going down the rabbit hole. Again, we're now in 2023. Wake up. This evolution is going to take time. And I'm going to show you all how Hyperledger, again, in comparison to what Rob Palatnik said in 2022, is at the forefront of all of this. We have Hedera on Hyperledger. We have Ripple on Hyperledger. We have Stellar on Hyperledger. We have Casper on Hyperledger. Pay attention, devils in the details. People will continue to FUD these projects, these cryptocurrency assets, but they are at the forefront of all of this evolution taking place. Okay, so here, this just came out from the Hyperledger Foundation YouTube channel. It only has 193 freaking views. Okay, and it says how Hyperledger technologies can help build central bank digital currencies. Mind you, I just told you all of our favorite altcoins that are involved with the Hyperledger fabric, Hyperledger Foundation, right? Okay, this is a two hour and 30 minute long video. Well, here at about 25 minutes and 40 seconds, the audio on this kind of sucks. 
but you can go back and you can watch it yourself. Okay, again, this is from the Hyperledger Foundation. And you guys can see, this is a screenshot right here of the, um, the what is it, PowerPoint that they have displayed, okay, where they're talking again about how Hyperledger Foundations can help build central bank digital currencies. And here you see the protocol layer, okay, Hyperledger fabric, right? And down here, it mentions interoperability capabilities with traditional platforms, target two, i.e. the Euro system, market distributed ledger technology platforms, Corda and Fabric, again, Hyperledger fabric with Weaver. Now, who are these two individuals that are displaying this information? They are individuals from the Bank de France. Okay, if we come to back down here, you guys can see Bank de France, Euro system, again, Euro system, their little emblem right down here. Okay, so now, what I want you all to pay attention to is right here where it says traditional platform target two securities and it mentions hyperledger. Look at what Hadera, like you really cannot make this up. Okay, just mention securities. And this is recent. This is from eight hours ago. Okay, helping build central bank digital currencies. We know that Hadera is part of the hyperledger or a hyperledger member, right? Look what they just announced. This is from today, April 25th, 2023. I won't go into this fundamental, but it says, we look to use Hedera. We really see the opportunity in the broader adoption of digital securities as the next evolution of the market infrastructure, right? Like people, you really got to wake up and see what's happening. And remember how in 2017, distributed ledger technology and blockchain was too immature for payments. 2021. Now we're in 2023, and do you see what was just announced today? Russia unveils new payment system that enables unrestricted cross-border crypto use. This article reads from Watcher Guru. Russia's finance minister, Anton Salon, I'm not going to butcher that one, spoke about a new payment system that will enable the use of crypto for international payments. So we're starting to see the adoption take place. We're starting to see the transition. Again, this digital transformation that's happening that everybody thought was going to be a fast, over-the-night, schematic that took place that made people rich get it okay crypto has done that in the past but if you really have a long-term perspective and you actually care about in-depth research you will truly realize the value that you hold in these digital assets long term again not financial advice okay <laughs> oh buddy i don't know how else to get people to wake up okay so we'll go back now to the linux foundation okay I mean, you guys can go to the Linux Foundation website and just see how massive this list of members is, okay? Over 2,000 businesses involved in the Linux Foundation. Now, the Linux Foundation, a global nonprofit organization, enables mass innovation through... Now, this is where we're going to switch the vocabulary, and I'm going to show you all the importance of the Hyperledger fabric, the Hyperledger Foundation, and who's involved via our favorite utility-driven altcoins, Okay, we got Ripple and XRP. We got Hedera Hashgraph and HBAR. We got Casper Network with the Casper token, right? Well, excuse me, we got the Stellar Development Foundation. Okay, Stellar Lumens, XLM. All right, pay attention. Um, now, this fundamental report that came out this year, March 2nd, 2023, the Linux Foundation research shows economic value of open source software rising in terms of benefits versus costs. This research clearly underscores that open source software has substantial economic value to companies and that its value will increase for most organizations the longer and more they use it. Now, you might be saying, why are you even talking about the Linux Foundation, Cypress? Why is this even important and relevant to what you were just talking about? Remember, we started on the Hyperledger Foundation, okay? This report is recent, and it's literally telling you right here the economic value that open source technology has, okay? It says, by helping to quantify the impact, we help companies understand their own benefits, costs, and the value of supporting and contributing to the open source software that is foundational to the world's infrastructure and a force for innovation. That's massive right there, okay? Um, this is their report. Now, let's just pay attention real fast. Hyperledger, founded by the Linux Foundation, Hyperledger is an umbrella project of open source blockchains and related tools that the Linux Foundation started back in December 2015, 2015. IBM, Intel, SAP, Ariba have contributed to the support collaborative development of blockchain-based distributed ledgers, right? So back to the vocabulary, open source, okay? As from the Linux Foundation's report that was put out March 2023. So this, again, is recent. Measuring the economic value of open-sourced software, 
right? Or OSS is the acronym for that, right? So I put this tweet out for you guys. It's a kind of a mouthful. I said to you all, Ripple, Hedera, Casper Network, and the Stellar Organization, again, all members of the Hyperledger Foundation, all members of the Linux Foundation, all provide open source software as part of their efforts to build and promote decentralized networks. Remember what the Linux Foundation just said about measuring the economic value of open source technology, right? This again from this year. Open source software refers to the software whose source code is publicly available for anyone to view. Ripple provides an open source protocol called the XRP Ledger, which allows for fast and secure transactions using the XRP cryptocurrency. Hedera Hashcraft provides an open source platform for building decentralized applications and services. Casper Labs provides an open source blockchain platform called Casper Network. The Stella Development Foundation provides an open source platform for building decentralized financial applications. Do you, are you all starting to see why all of these key market participants are playing an important role in the future evolution of distributed ledger technology and this open source right ecosystem? Okay. Um, I, I don't know how else to get people to see it. This was interesting. This was an article, February 13th, 2023. Okay. I'll end you guys here with this. Um, John Deaton says, we force the SEC to admit that XRP is a software code, right? Again, open source software. Okay. This is straight from the Hedera.com homepage. I love this. I didn't even really see this until I saw this fundamental report put out from the Linux Foundation. Um, but then when I went to go check out the Hedera website, literally right at the top, the open source public ledger for, and it goes on, NFTs, CBDCs, right? And it just identity. And it goes on to the next one. Everyone, right? Like this is about to be so big. And I don't even think that people are really truly understanding and comprehending what is about to happen. Now back to this, how Hyperledger Technologies can help build central bank digital currencies video that was just released. This is interesting. It says right here, the platform, transaction processing, scalability, compliance, accountability, transparency, resiliency, requirements of a CBDC system. You guys see this right here. Okay. Again, remember who these individuals are involved in this call. We see IBM down here in the bottom. We have the uh, Bank de France, okay, the Euro system, right? It talks about securities, okay, tokenization. And it says right here, the platform high throughput token settlement based on Hyperledger fabric, right? Okay, so this is again from 2023. This just came out eight hours ago. You saw how 2017 distributed ledger technology too immature. 2021, too immature. But now again, we're starting to see Hyperledger fabric pop up more and more consistently 2022 rob palatnik says hyperledger is at the forefront of everybody's discussion here now we see discussions cbdc systems involving hyperledger fabric now in 2023 we're starting to see the evolution take place and it's going to consistently scale throughout the years this is not a overnight scheme to get rich when you really truly understand what is about to happen via the behind the scenes of our digital infrastructure, our financial digital infrastructure, I mean, then you can really kind of comprehend what you're getting yourself into. Take it upon yourself to understand, okay? Look at this video right here, just as an example. 193 views. You really have to understand how early you are. You don't want to get into these technologies, into this type of research, into this type of awakening, when everybody else, okay, again, let's go back to the Hedera website where it says, the open source public ledger for everyone, okay? You don't want to get in when everyone knows about it. And do you want me to prove to you all how not everybody knows about it just to show you that we are early? Let's go back to this PDF right here. Let's zoom out. Here it says business blockchain brand familiarity, right? Again, remember Hedera, the public open, open source ledger for everyone. Well, look at how many people, again, this is, this is a massive overview of individuals from the Linux Foundation that took this survey, okay? And it says right here, purple, have not heard of, okay? And it says right here, Hedera. Look at look at how big this purple is right here. Look at how many enterprises, businesses, okay, have not heard of Hedera yet. You don't want to get into these, and I'm not, I'm not telling you to go buy freaking HBAR, okay? I'm not, I'm just 
stating a fact. You don't want to get in when this purple level where people have not heard of this technology is gone. And that is a fact because by then it'll be too late. So anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed this video breakdown. Smash that thumbs up button if you did subscribe. Uh, we do appreciate the love and the support. As always, do your own personal research. I'm not telling you guys to go out and buy any of these altcoins that we talked about in today's video breakdown. As always, be cognizant, be aware, and I'll see you all in the next video.